Hello, my name is Sven from Origin, and this is my basic champion guide to Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw Solo Queue is not a bad pick at all. I don't think it's as OP as people say, but it's definitely good. One of the main things that it excels at is that it has really high damage output without having that many items, using a Rage Blade and Hurricane. And you can kill tanks really, really fast. It's good at good with champs such as Brown, just can stun him really fast with the passive. It's good with Trash because you can heal, mix up your lack of mobility. But in Solo Queue, it might be bad against teams like Malphite, you know, Victor, kind of dive champions that might go on you really fast and your team might not be able to defend you because you're not coordinated enough for solo queue. But once you have any kind of defensive uh, champions like, you know, LeBron, Alistar, Gragas and so on, you can really just out damage anyone by just standing still and attacking at them. Gobo's lane phase is kind of the same as it always was. He is strongest at like level 4 to 5 when you have a couple of points in your, in your W and you can abuse the range against champions such as Lucian or something, we have a lot more range in them. He has a good DPS, but he doesn't have burst, so you want to trade longer trades with Feral Battle and your W. You don't want to trade like one attack and a Q spell from Lucian, because then you will lose. So you want to go for longer trades, and champs such as Brown, Trash, Alistar that can actually commit to a trade is good with you in lane. But you also have to be, be careful of gank, because that's the main reason of Kog'Maw. That champs such as, you know, Bike and just ult on you, if you have no flash, or that to every gank. Trash can flash on you with, with Flay and launch on his jungler in, and you have a hard time escaping the gank. You only have a flash, you know, at, at the best. So, having supports that have, you know, tools to save you is really good. Such as Trash, uh, Alistar can block for you. So, the main weakness is really ganks or strong lanes that can, you know, jump on you and punish you hard. Teamfighter and combo is kind of depending, as you always, on both your comp and their comp. Because if you are really fed, you can most of the time actually just be a tank with the stuff like Mola Motu, Stretch Cage, and just stand still and attack people and kill them really fast. But if they have champs that dive on you, such as Malphite, Nautilus, you know, Victor, Scan Champions, then you might have want to be a bit careful before they like wait for them to use the stuff. And then also, one thing people don't do with Kogmo is that they actually just press W in the start of the fight. But I think it's better to attack like one two, three, four, five times, and then press W, so you get more attacks with Queen Souls off, because that's actually where your damage comes from, it's like the, the Queen Souls Hurricane doing the damage with your W, so I prefer to get some stacks going, and then use W in team fights. And, I mean, obviously if you have Lulu, and champs like Soraka, Lulu, Janna, then you can just go full ham, and just tank the entire enemy team with your Hurricane, your Lifesteal, your Maw, your Stairs Cage, whatever you have, so... That's kind of how you play team fights. It depends so much on what the enemy team has, but generally you just want to stand there and attack people that are close to you. Keep in mind that when playing Kog'Maw, you shouldn't use your ult just to poke people at full HP because their ult doesn't do much damage to people that are full HP and it costs a lot of mana if you use it more than once. So you might just want to save it for team fights or whatever and just not, not, not use it until they're low because when they're actually low HP, it does a lot of damage because it's an execute effect now. So try to not use it too much I think that people don't think about anymore is that the Q of Kog'Maw actually has a, a use other than damage. It reduces tanks, MR and uh, armor a lot. It's I think 20% at max rank, so at level 18. If you're actually playing against Malphite or Nautilus, you might want to just use the Q in between attacks just to reduce their armor and MR by so much. Both for you and your team, it can be a big thing. So keep it in mind when playing against tanks. So Rune for Kog'Maw is the same as almost every other card, you use 80 marks, armor seals, and then on the glyphs, you can choose to go either full attack speed, full MR, or you can split MR and attack speed together to have like a mixed page, and then for the quints you go attack speed as always. The reason that you want to go either full attack speed is that, let's say you're playing against a lane that has no magic damage, Lucian plus a Trash, has little magic damage, right, but you don't really need to have MR against a Trash, so you just go attack speed for lane phase, so you have a strong laning. Or you can go like half half magic resist and half uh, attack speed. The reason you would choose like half MR and half attack speed is playing against something that has slightly magic damage in lane, but not really that much magic damage. Something like a trash has magic damage, but not really that much of it, so you might take like 6.7 MR. Um, whereas against something like Corky and, and Annie, you might want to have 12 MR in the glyphs. But if you're playing against a Lucian and a uh, support that has no magic damage at all, then you might just want to take, let's say, a Trundle, then you might want to take full attack speed and just win the lane by having more stats than the other guy. 
So Master of Cogmore is kind of the same as almost every other it carry. The only thing that's actually important is that you get the Fervor Battle. Um, because it stacks really well with Cogmore. Since he attacks so fast, you get so many procs of Fervor. And Fervor doesn't take do less, less damage because of your attacks. It applies next to your attacks, so it's really efficient on Cogmore to have Fervor. Also with Hurricane, you do so much damage in teamfights on Fervor, Queen, Souls, Hurricane together. So it's really, really strong on Cogmore to have Fervor Battle. The skill on Cogmore is pretty simple. After they change the, the, the passive of the Q to the passive of the W, you don't actually skill Q anymore until you can't skill anything else. You go W level 1, then E level 2, W level 3, and then E, then W, and then ult whenever you can. Max W, and uh, get ult when you can, and then E second, and just take Q whenever you're level you know, 13, 14, etc. So the only build that's important you get on Cogmore is that you get Rageblade into Hurricane. And then you can do whatever you want. I mean, not, not really whatever you want, but it depends on the aim team comp and your, your team comp because you just want to get boots. I prefer boots of swiftness boots or CDR boots, but mainly I get tier 3 boots. And then you can get anything from player ranking against melee tanks. You can get QSS against champs like Lissandra, Ash, etc. You can go Witsend if you're against a lot of Ape champions and you have much damage on your team. You can go even IH is not, not terrible. You can go Stairs Cage against, like, you know, champs that focus you a lot. You can go Mob and Maltus against APs if you don't need QSS. So, you have options, but I think that you will never go wrong if you go Rage Blade, Hurricane, Blade Ringking, with a defensive item like Maw or QSS or Stairs Cage, and then fill out last items with whatever is suitable. There's items like Witsend and Frozen Mallet are never bad. Thank you for watching my basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lowclass.com.